I don't have faith necessarily in Dave Roberts. I'm sorry. Hey, look, he, he got him here, but some of those decisions in Boston confuse me. Joining us now to talk to World Series Game 3 from Fox and MLB Network is J.P. Morosi, who joins us now on the line of the Rich Eisen Show. Am I going over the top a little bit too much on Dave Roberts? Am I being too harsh? Well, uh, Andrew, uh, good afternoon. I, I would say this, that uh, Dave Roberts is managing the team now about the same way that he has managed them all season long. And uh, he's, of course, running up against very, very good, good competition right now, which is part of the reason why his team is down 0-2. Uh, and, and really, I had less of an issue with the, the Game 1 decision on, on the right-left matchup and bringing in Alex Wood there than, than most did. However, I, I'll make this big-picture point that you've made it to the World Series, and Cody Bellinger was your NLCS MVP. He's a young player. He's a big part of your team's future, and he does not start either of the first two games of the World Series. I realize that, that they were opposing a left-handed pitcher in both those games. But I, I think, Andrew, to some extent, I, I agree with you in, 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 the, in the way that you've got to put your best team on the field within reason, and I think sometimes when you do things a little bit too by the book, I think it maybe stifles your team a little bit. And I, I think the, the, the ballpark atmosphere at Fenway Park, the weather, a lot of those other factors, I think, were, were working against the Dodgers there. But it did not seem to me that it was a, a free-flowing team, that the at-bats were all that relaxed and, and in rhythm in the same way the Boston's were. And I, I have to think that, that some more involvement from your best player in the, in the previous series might have helped that. All right, I'm not suggesting that he doesn't have, Dave Roberts doesn't have autonomy here and the right to make his own decisions. But these lineup decisions, are they organizational decisions or is he making them alone while sitting on the plane flying to Boston? Uh, I think organizational is probably the right word to use there, Andrew. I, I think that it's, to me, this is the way that, that modern organizations view the manager's role. I, I grew up in the game, I think back to my first years covering baseball, uh, almost a decade and a half ago, and, and the, the, the managers seem to be these all-knowing people with decades of experience in the game, which certainly Dave Roberts has as well, but that they, they were left to their own devices in terms of the lineup and, and their in-game decisions. And, and now uh, managers are looked upon as being part of an overall collective, which is okay, and that's, that's, that's perfectly fine as, as, the, as the job has evolved, but it does create a little bit of a, an inconsistency, publicly at least, when, when it's Dave Roberts left to explain for the losses at the podium, when in fact uh, the, the decisions that went into it were probably shared by many, many people. I, I think the Dodgers are probably, Andrew, like a lot of teams, in that there are recommendations made from their an analytics department to the manager regarding lineups. And, and, and there's probably a sliding scale of all MLB teams on how strictly those recommendations are followed. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that the Dodgers would still say, and Dave would still say, that he has the final say-so on the lineup card, which I think is true. It's just a matter of how much, uh, how much influencing there is going on from, from the front office and from the analytics folks. And I think in the Dodgers' case, there's a fair amount of it. It's, uh, it's, it's still ultimately is Dave's decision, but there's a lot of influence there, and, and I think that's not uh, that's not at all a rarity for the for the game right now in the way that it's played. We're talking to J.P. Morosi here from Fox and MLB Network on the J.D. Martinez front. What do we know about the injury, and if so, because of no D.H. now at Dodger Stadium, where does he go tonight if he plays? Well, that's a great question, and there's really been no definitive word made yet here. Of course, about seven hours or so before first pitch, so they'll, they'll be, I'm sure, pretty guarded about things until uh, we get a little bit closer. But he certainly, to me, is watching him run down the first baseline, Andrew, and in game two, look, look to me like he's still being affected by that from the slide, the awkward slide in game one. Uh, if he can't go, then he's basically relegated to a bit of a pinch hitting duty because you're not going to have him in for defense late in the game anyway. And, that, and the tough part about in limiting him there is in the NL Park, um, if, if you don't trust him to, to get in the field, then any time you go to him, it's a two-move move because you have to have somebody come in and, or, or he's going to hit for the pitcher and then if the pitcher comes in behind him. But no matter what, you cannot have him hit for a position player and then not basically switch that person out with either another position player or double switching. So there's, to me, it's a really difficult method to use a, a position player who's, who's not feeling well physically because you're worried about him getting in the field. So uh, I, I think if he, if he can start, 
maybe you, maybe you get him in that bat uh, you know, early in the game and to try to steal a bat in that bat. Of course, he'll he'll be able to hit on the road if he bats in the first inning before he even takes the field, which maybe lends its own creative uh, uh, interpretations maybe in the options there for Alex Cora. So I think if he can get in there and have an at-bat, they'll have him start maybe getting that bat or two in there. But we have seen many, many times, Andrew, in years past, I think back to Vladimir Guerrero uh, playing for the Rangers at San Francisco eight years ago now, you put those American League DHs in the outfield and the ball seems to have a radar and it sure. finds them in about the second inning. So I think that's something for the Red Sox to consider. It's fascinating. I, I was watching Alex Cora give an interview on ESPN Deportes yesterday, and I, and I think my high school Spanish served me well enough, where he said that he is going to play, he just can't say yet where it's going to be. But JP, the idea that he would put him in there getting that bat and then pull him is fascinating. You think that's a legitimate possibility? Uh, I, I think it's probably pretty far down the list, but uh, of, of options, I, I would think maybe he at least gets two at bats. And 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 one thing to watch, Andrew, in terms of when where they bat him, maybe they bump him up a little bit, even uh, higher in the lineup. Maybe just a spot just to get him the extra at bat if they can, and then get him out of there for defensive purposes. It's always that middle game push and pull if it's the fourth or fifth inning. Let's say you've got a one run lead, and he just had his second or third at bat. Uh, you probably get him out of the game now. I think that's, that's got to be the mentality if, in fact, you do it that way, knowing, of course, that you've got an elite defensive outfield behind him with Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field and then probably Mookie Betts moving back to right. So I think that's uh, – or you can put Mookie a second. We'll see how that ends up playing out as well. So there's a lot of different things to think of. I saw Mookie Betts say uh, on MLB Network after game two that he's, he's a little nervous about playing second base. The ball, ball comes at you pretty fast. Uh, it, it's been obviously a number of years since Mookie played a second base on a regular basis. Uh, so I think those are all things to consider. Uh, but I, I would say, Andrew, if, if J.D. starts, it's with the idea that I think he gets at least – two and maybe even three plate appearances before uh, they go with their best defense. I'm talking to J.P. Ambrosi from Fox and, and MLB Network here. Why, beyond the analytics, we know, J.P., that the Red Sox are fantastic with two outs, right? Whether it's two outs and nobody on or two outs and runners in scoring position. What's their explanation? What do they say when asked why they are so good as situational hitters? It's a great question, and I think it goes back to and this year even more so than, than past years. Number one, they're very well prepared. Uh, they've got an excellent uh, coaching staff, a new hitting coach this year, uh, and Tim Hires who's gotten a lot of credit for their, their ability to vary their approach. And also the influence of J.D. Martinez. I think he has really had a tangible effect on the rest of the lineup in terms of their preparedness, their ability to be comfortable um, hitting deep in counts. I think that's something J.D. has always done for a long time. And when you see someone do it at that level, uh, with that level of success, uh, as J.D. is doing it right now, it has a very, very manifestly positive effect on the rest of the team. I think the Red Sox are living that right now. Uh, we're seeing a, a thoroughness of their approach. I think also the, the, if you look at their, their lefties, for the most part, you look at Ben Benintendi, great at-bats against Kershaw in, in game one. And that just comes from you've got great hitters who hang in there really well left on left. And, and there we go, kind of the, the contrast between the two teams. Ben Benintendi, uh, left, a young lefty hitter, who started against the lefty in game one, had a sensational game. Bellinger, a, an NLCS MVP on the other side, didn't start, and it has only three at-bats, I believe, in the whole series. So it's, it's a big difference there. The, the trust of the Red Sox, the like Alex Cora, the way he manages them, uh, in, instills that confidence in them. But I, I would go back to those two key new people from this year. Tim Hires is the hitting coach, and then J.D. Martinez uh, and the influence that he has both when he's batting and when the other guys are at the plate as well. Were you surprised when Ned Coletti said the Dodgers, J.P., were, were affected by the weather? Uh, not, not entirely, and, and here's what I mean by that. I think that you look at the, the, the early part of the game, and in game one especially, the, the, the aggressiveness of the Red Sox, they're certainly more used to the, to the elements. And I realize this isn't college football where uh, it's, it's in Michigan playing USC and it's, there's a massive climate difference and all the kids have grown up there and it's part of the, uh, part of the DNA of, of those teams, so to speak. Uh, You've got players from all, all around the world on both teams here. But I, I think that you look at the way that they're, they're playing, I think the Red Sox comfort level at Fenway, the angles of the ballpark, I think we saw that come into play. David Freeze was a little, uh, a little tentative there going after the, the Foul ball. There was the ground rule double that sort of fooled Josh Peterson. I, I would say maybe to amend the statement and make it a little more comfortable for me, I would say 
the the elements and the ballpark. Yeah. Because Fenway in October is a very unique place, and I do think the atmosphere, stepping in there, you're cold, you're maybe not feeling quite as limber as you normally do. And I think, by the way, that played a huge role, I believe, for Ryan Madison, not being totally loose, wasn't throwing strikes. Uh, obviously a huge moment there in Game 2. Curious to see if Dave Roberts goes back to Ryan Madsen, who curiously, I, I believe, still has a an ERA of zero in the World Series, despite the fact that all the inherited runners have scored. J.P. Morosi here from MLB Network and from Fox. All right, I got to ask this, and I'm asking not as an Indians fan, although people will not believe that, but I'll, I'll ask it regardless. That's okay. J.P., <laughs> is Major League Baseball relieved that the Astros aren't playing this week? So uh, it's a great question. Uh, I think, Andrew, that, that obviously the the back and forth, uh, uh, baseball's version of Spygate, if you will, uh, w- was not a good story for for the league. Clearly, but it went uh, away I, in like thirty six hours. Yeah, it did. It did, and and I think with the Astros' demise, that was part of it. Um, I think it would be uncomfortable, uh, a little more uncomfortable, I guess, if they were still playing. I, I would, I would grant you that that it'd be, it'd be more of a topic. Uh, MLB, they, they had a very, very quick investigation. They very quickly issued a statement saying that they believe that there was no, um, nothing that was punishable there from a the standpoint of uh, any game sanctions or something dramatic of that nature, and, and the Astros have maintained publicly that there was nothing of an offensive nature, that, that it was merely defensive, which is uh, a little questionable, I would Strange say, given that if it, was, if it was really, I think to your point, Andrew, if it was really, that was really their sentiment, it's very easy to put a phone call into MLB's office and say, listen, can you guys check into this? Because that's the proper, you know, we're not doing citizen arrest here. This is, you, you go to the authority on the, in the matter and let them, let them handle things. So that, that to me, was a little, a little um, fishy of an argument to make from, from, my, from my perspective. But I, I think it's something in general, Andrew, that's going to be talked about a lot in the, in the coming weeks. The GM meetings come up in about 10 days or so. And MLB has got to sit down and figure out, candidly, what kind of sport they want to be from a standpoint of technology. It's, it's clearly the, the, the technology and the, the fear about signs being stolen, not even just the actual act of it, but the fear of it is changing the game because that's, that's what's building in so many of the, the pauses and they've got to change my signs here and there because you're worried about signs being stolen. That, that, is, a, that is a very tangible, measurable fact. It's, it's lengthening the games. Uh, and, and baseball has to find a way to make a comprehensive solution in a game where sign stealing is as old as the sport itself. They have to find a way to, to either regulate it or get everything out in the open somehow, some way, because uh, until that happens, we're going to keep seeing problems occur like we saw with the Astros in this postseason. Real, real quick here. There were plenty of reports of skepticism from other teams about the findings of MLB's investigation. Are you hearing the same skepticism? Well, that was a, a report from Jeff Passan there recently about the, the frustrations of, of other teams. I, I think that that's accurate, and, and I, I believe, again, that's, that to me will be uh, a, a very interesting forum to cover at the GM meetings. I would love to be actually in there. Listen, I won't be able to, but uh, to actually hear what that actually is said because that, that's going to be the, the airing of grievances, I believe, will be in, the, in those rooms, those meeting rooms. And the Astros, for a long time, Andrew, have probably not been the most popular team among other clubs, so that probably is part of the dynamic here as well. You can watch them tonight. Great stuff on MLB Tonight, which is 2.13, by the way, on DirecTV, on Thank MLB you. Network, and on Fox, of course, as well. John Morosi, follow him on Twitter. Twitter with a J-O-N. No H. John Morosi. J.P. Morosi. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Enjoy Dodger hey, Stadium. My pleasure. You do a fantastic job, Andrew. Great to Thank see you, man. over the air today. Thank, thanks likewise, so much. Been a sir. Fan for a long time. Thank you. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you. Good to connect with J.P. Morosi there. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.